are, by nature, explorers. The same curiosity that sends us to the stars at the speed of thought. Urges us to go there in reality. And whenever we make a great new leap, we elevate humanity. Bring people and nations together. Usher in new discoveries. And new technologies. So remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. So hello everyone, welcome to um, our moon phases talk about and using Oreos, learning how to do our moon phases. Uh, so my name is Janelle Wilson. I am a NASA JPL Solar System Ambassador. I even have a really cool badge from them, which sounds like I'm re something really cool. Um, really, I just do outreach uh, events um, in order to talk about what NASA is doing and, and help teach people about space and what's going on with space education. Um, so today we're going to talk about moon phases and how moon phases work um, and, and how to identify them. And so hopefully you've got everything with you that you need today in order for us to learn about our moon phases using our Oreos. So you need a plate and I've taken my plate and I, I've drawn an earth in the center. You don't need to do that, but um, I've done that just to help with explaining everything as we go along. And then you'll need your Oreo cookies to hopefully you found the Oreos. And you will need about eight per person. Now, you, sometimes you can make four work, but technically you should be able to make four work, but it doesn't always work that way. So if we start with eight, you'll make sure that it's perfect. Now, with this, the main thing what we want to look at is being able to identify the different moon phases and, and what the names of those moon phases are. So we're going to start with um, the new moon and, and go from there for each of the different phases. Now, it'll be a new moon in a couple of days. Um, I believe it's on April 12th next week uh, when we'll have uh, on Monday when we'll have the new moon and a new moon um, is basically a moon you can't see and it's a moon you can't see because the lit part of the moon is facing away from the earth and so half of the moon is always lit by the sun and as the moon orbits the earth what changes is how much of that lit half we can see and so um, as each day um, it, the moon will rise 50 minutes later than it did the previous day. So if you go out at the exact same time every day and want to see the moon, you won't always see it at the same time. So for instance, if you go out this evening to look for the moon, you won't see the moon because the, um, right now it's a waning crescent moon. And the waning crescent moon is kind of catching up to the cycle of the sun. It's, it's um, getting closer to rising and setting almost at the same time as the sun, which is what happens at new moon. And so um, you, if you want to see the moon right now, you would need to get up and, and look for it in the morning sky. Now, the moon is up right now. It doesn't set until about 3.30 this afternoon, but you can't see it because of how the amount of it that's lit and where it is in reference to the sun, um, you wouldn't be able to see it because of the sun over shadowing it being too bright. So let's start with our new moon. And uh, we're gonna take an Oreo and we're gonna twist it. And uh, this, mine didn't twist so well. I want one that has absolutely no frosting on it, no cream on it. So I'm gonna scrape off all of the cream on this one. So I've got my spoon. So if you have a spoon, the spoon is gonna be really helpful with, with getting um, out the filling when we don't need it. And I'm actually gonna use, cause it, it still can see a bit of filling. I'm going to use the side that, um, didn't have the filling to represent my new moon. So remember that the new moon, you can't, you can't see. Uh, the only time you can kind of see the effects of that is during a solar eclipse. Now, solar eclipses themselves, being able to see one is relatively rare. And that is for a couple of different reasons. The first one being that the um, moon doesn't orbit the earth in the same plane. As, as the Earth orbits the sun. So it, instead of it being like straight around like this, 
it's at a slight tilt of about five degrees. So there's only actually two times in its orbit each month that it crosses what we call the plane of the ecliptic, where an eclipse can happen. And so because of that, there's not many times throughout the year when an eclipse actually can happen, when everything's lined up correctly, when the moon's in, in a particular spot, the sun and the earth are, are in two other spots, where you either get a solar or lunar eclipse. But being a solar eclipse, what happens is the moon um, gets in between the earth and the sun, and the moon then casts a shadow onto the earth, and you can see that going across the sun, which is really, really cool. If you ever get a chance to see one, you definitely should. So because the moon is so much smaller than the earth, it crosses a really small shadow onto the earth. You have to be in very specific places in order to see it. All right, so what I've done, um, I'm just putting it down. I've stuck mine on the plate, so that did not stick very well. Um, I'm sticking mine on the plate just so it will, um, I can hold these up and show them to you. If you're using this thing at home, you don't need to glue it down, um, obviously, because you're going to eat these in a little bit. So that's my new moon. And I'm also going to take um, my marker and I'm just going to label this as the new moon. Now, the four of the phases last basically for one day or actually one instance if we want to get really specific um, but the other phases go throughout um, several days and so the next one is the waxing crescent so the waxing crescent you can see in the evening sky usually right after the sun has set because what it's happening is it almost looks like it's trailing the sun and you can see that um, waxing crescent like i said in the in the evening sky and you'll see it getting bigger as the as the day goes on i'm sorry as the days go on you'll see it get bigger and bigger all right so i'm going to take an oreo my oreo this time and what i'm going to do is i'm going to scrape out my shape of the waxing crescent so the waxing crescent we always see lit on the right hand side in the northern hemisphere. If we were in the southern hemisphere, it would be lit on the left hand side. It'd be the opposite. So if you think about it, um, the because of the way we are um, seeing the moon in the northern hemisphere is opposite from the southern hemisphere. So it's actually the moon phases are the opposite in the southern hemisphere. They look the opposite. So it's the same phase. It just looks the opposite. It's almost like looking at the moon upside down in a way. So I'm just going to make the little crescent shape and pull out the rest of my filling here for my Oreo. That doesn't show up my crescent shape. So once again, I'm just using my spoon to pull out that cream filling there until I have a little crescent shape there. So I've got my crescent shape and now I'm going to pop it on my plate and I'm just going to use some of the leftover cream as my to stick it on to the plate. I'm one of those weird people. This is fairly funny. I'm one of those people that doesn't actually like Oreos. So um, I like to use to show moon phases, but I don't actually eat the Oreos. I know it's crazy. All right, so um, the second phase then is the waxing crescent. Now I want you to notice I've put this going counterclockwise. So if we are looking at um, the earth from the Northern um, hemisphere down on the at the North Pole, the moon orbits the Earth counterclockwise. Anticlockwise, I think is what you call it. So it does it um, counterclockwise. So this is our um, new moon and I've got it going around. I'm sorry, our waxing crescent and I've got it going around counterclockwise or anticlockwise. So waxing crescent. Remember what I said, the, the waxing crescent you can see in the uh, evening sky. So next week, Tuesday through Friday, if you if you go out, especially um, Wednesday, Thursday, it should be pretty easy to see that waxing crescent moon um, if, if it's not cloudy. So that's our, our waxing crescent. And so from there, about a week after the new moon, we have what's called the first quarter moon. And there's a couple different reasons why we call this the first quarter. So the, basically, we see um, a quarter of the moon is lit. So half of the moon is always lit. We see half of the half. So half of the half is a quarter. So that's part of the reason we call it a quarter moon. Um, the other reason it's called a quarter moon is because this is a, um, a uh, four week cycle, basically. 
a four week cycle. And so it's one quarter of the way through the cycle. So there's a couple of different reasons why we can think about this as a quarter moon and especially why it's the first quarter moon. It's in the first quarter of the cycle. So I've done the same thing. I've taken another Oreo. I've scraped out um, half of the filling in order to make my quarter moon. And my quarter moon, first quarter moon is going to be after the waxing crescent. And I would see this about one week after the new moon. So since our new moon is on the 12th, Monday the 12th, it would be about the, the one week later. And that is when I would see that. I'm just gonna pop this onto my plate with the rest of those. And I'm going to call this my first quarter. You can also um, call this a the waxing quarter moon. Um, so you can call it lots of different things. So continuing to go around here. So I've got my new moon like we did first. Then we have our waxing crescent and then our new, I'm sorry, our new moon waxing crescent first quarter. So we're going around. After that, we have what's called the waxing gibbous, which is, I admit, kind of a, a funny um, name. And this is when we can see the moon nearly full. So it's going to be in between the first quarter moon and the full moon. So it's nearly, it's getting fuller and fuller each night. It's, it's usually really obvious to see in the sky. Um, and that is our uh, waxing gibbous. So it's nearly full. And the way that we can tell that it's a waxing gibbous as opposed to a waning gibbous is which side is lit up. Remember the waxing phases in the Northern Hemisphere um, are always lit up on the right-hand side. So they're always lit up on the right-hand side. So I'm just manipulating my frosting here for my uh, waxing gibbous. I'm gonna add in a little bit extra frosting here. Some of it came off. So it looks more like a waxing gibbous moon. And pop it onto my plate. This one does not actually, did not look good at all. Let me try another one. There we go. It's a bit better. So I've got my waxing gibbous. It's nearly full. It's more than a quarter or more than half. What some people call that quarter moon a half. Um, and it's nearly full. So that is my waxing gibbous moon. I'm just going to pop it onto my plate. So waxing gibbous comes after the first quarter moon. Once again, I know it's waxing because of it being lit up on the right hand side. So that's my waxing gibbous. Now, when I'm putting these on my plate, I'm, I'm assuming um, I, if I were a little stick person standing on my earth at the center of my plate and looking up at it. So if I was um, standing here at my plate and looking up at this, it's, it's lit up on the right hand side. And so that is my waxing gibbous. And then this brings us to now our full moon. So our full moon is, is obviously when we can see the entire lit side of the moon. Remember, half of the moon is always lit, and I can see the entire lit half um, during a full moon. And the full moon rises as the sun is setting. So the sun will be setting in the west, so the full moon will be rising in the east. Um, and they're kind of opposites, which makes sense because the sun is fully lighting up the, the moon there in, in the center. So um, got my filling here, make sure it's all nice and full. And I'm going to pop it down onto my plate and show you in just a second. Um, but this would be the full moon would be two weeks after the new moon. All right, so it'd be two weeks after my new moon. So I'd have my new moon, my waxing crescent, my first quarter moon, my waxing gibbous, and then my full moon. And that would be about two weeks after the new moon. Now, after the full moon, the moon starts to wane, right? So it starts to look smaller and smaller um, each night. And the way to tell the difference between the waxing moon and the waning moon, a couple ways is when you see the moon. Um, if you see it, later um, in the evening or even in the in the daytime, it's more likely to be the um, waning gibbous moon. Um, and then if as you start to see it earlier and earlier, so starting towards the, the mornings, that's when you have that waning crescent we talked about a minute ago. So I'm going to 
make my waning crescent now. So the difference between the waning crescent and the waxing crescent is the side that's lit up. So remember waxing all of the waxing phases. I'm gonna see the lit on the right hand side with the waning phases, I'm gonna see it lit on the um, left hand side instead. And so I can very easily identify if it's waxing or waning by what side, right side waxing, left side is waning. And so that's a really quick and easy way to check what the moon phase is. I have to say that the uh, cream filling on these does not uh, come out quite as easily as, as I remember. I'm wondering if British Oreos are different from American ones. Very interesting. All right, so um, I'm going to have my wa waning gibbous. So remember, it's more than half uh, lit up, but less than full. So the gibbous is more than half, but less than full. And it's going to look something like this. So that is my. Um, waning gibbous and I've pulled it up upside down and it's lit up on the left hand side this time so it's hit up um lit up on the left hand side as opposed to being lit up on the right hand side and that's one way I know that it's a waning moon all right so I'm just gonna add it to my plate here and it is our waning gibbous and so now, as we go through the rest, I think maybe you're gonna to start to get an idea of what's gonna happen next. So I had new moon, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous. And so can you guess which one's going to be next? Which one's gonna be next? So if you said the uh, waning uh, crescent or the third quarter, I'm sorry, the waning uh, quarter moon or the third quarter moon, then you are correct. And it's gonna look just the opposite of this one. So it's gonna be half lit, but it's gonna be lit on the left-hand side instead of the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and make this one now. So we'll grab our Oreo and we will make sure it's only lit halfway for a quarter. So remember the reason why it's called a quarter is because it's now, it's the third quarter. So we're three quarters of the way through the cycle. So that's why we call it the third quarter moon. Since we're three quarters of the way through the cycle. And I have that here. You can see it's lit up on the left-hand side and I'm going to add this to my plate. And you can do the same. And then we just have one left after this. So this is my third quarter. And so once again, remember it's a quarter moon because we're seeing half of a half. And it's also third quarter because it's um, a, basically a four week cycle. It's a 28, 38 day cycle. And so we're about a quarter of the way through that cycle. And if we take a look now, um, I've added that on and we can see that, there we go, have that. And we've got one left. I think it might just about be able to squeeze that onto my plate. So let's see if we can make our waning crescent, which is the current moon phase. So uh, if you go uh, out in tomorrow morning and have a look for the moon, then you should be able to see that waning crescent. And it will be um, visible in the morning. All right, so now I have my waning crescent, which once again, it looks like that crescent shape. It's lit up on the left-hand side because all of my waning are lit up on the left-hand side. I'm just gonna scrape out my extra filling to make my quarter moon. So now I have my waning crescent and I'm going to pop that with the rest of these on to my plate. And so this whole cycle, like I said, it takes about a month 
And that's where we get the word month from. You've probably worked that out before, right? Moon, month, sounds very similar. Um, and, and that is why, because months were initially based on the movement of the moon. In some calendars, it still is based on the movement of the moon and not uh, just spreading out the days of the year. So there are different calendars. So if you're like me, you probably have some really sticky fingers from the filling of your Oreos. Hopefully you like the filling from the Oreos, unlike me. All right, so if we hold this up, hopefully nothing's gonna fall off. So we have our new moon. Remember, we're gonna go around um, counterclockwise or anti-clockwise. So then we have our waxing crescent. We have our first quarter moon, our waxing gibbous, then our full moon, waning gibbous, third quarter moon, and waning crescent. And then it, the cycle will start all over again. Now, have you worked out in this uh, model that we're using where the sun is? So have you worked out where the um, sun is? So the sun is, is, would be somewhere in this direction, pointing down onto the, um, towards the earth and the moon. And the, the trick with this is obviously the moon is three-dimensional and we're not kind of showing that here. So if, if any of you have ever come along to one of our events, um, I like to use what I call my moon phase, moon phase transporter, where I take ping pong balls and I put them onto a, uh, a, a piece of foam board and cut out a circle in the middle, middle. And that really helps you to see, you know, how that perspective, how your perspective of the lit side, how that changes. So I would um, recommend having a look for pictures of those and maybe coming out to one of our events when we can do those again, so you can really see how that works. So I wanted to show you now a little bit more about these moon phases and how we would um, give them some um, another way to look at the diagram of this. So I'm going to uh, share with you here a drawing that I made earlier of our moon uh, of the moon phases and kind of how this works and, and putting it along with our um, plate of Oreos that we've just made. So you have a look, we have the sun and obviously the sun is not this close to the earth and the moon. However, if I had drawn the sun as far away from the earth to scale um, as it would be, it wouldn't have fit on the screen. Uh, it would probably be a couple, it would be, you know, a couple streets away. So that wouldn't be ideal. So instead, um, we have this, uh, I'm just putting this to represent where the light is. Now, the other thing I want you to notice is I've, I've drawn um, a representation of the moon going around the earth here. And so you can see that half of the moon is always lit by the sun. So the half uh, that's facing the sun is the half that's lit by the sun. So half of it's always lit. And what changes is our perspective of that amount that's lit. And so when um, you're on the earth, and so I've drawn these little stick people to kind of help you think about this. When you're looking up at the moon, when, when the lit side is facing away from you, what you see then is the new moon. And so what you would see here then is the new moon here. And let me just see if I can fix this so I can, there we go. So here would be our new moon and this is what it's look like. Now we always show it represented like this, but if you go outside and try to spot the new moon, you're not gonna see it. So it's a darkened disc. You can't see it in the sky um, unless like I said, it's a solar eclipse. Otherwise you're not going to see the new moon. And then as the moon continues to um, orbit around the earth, when we're here at that second place, here's when we see that waxing crescent. And if you're standing here and, and looking up at the moon, 
you're getting this this idea of what it looks like of this crescent. So you're just seeing a tiny, tiny sliver of the lit amount of, of the moon. So what's changing is your perspective of how much of that moon lit side of the moon you can see. Now you can see when we get to the first quarter moon, now you can see half of the half that's lit. And, and so your, and that is why we can see that quarter moon phase, the first quarter moon. As we, as it continues to move around, we're starting to see more and more of the lit side. So now we get to our waxing gibbous moon. And then finally, about two weeks after the new moon, we get to the point where we can see the entire lit side of the moon. So half of that moon is lit. We can see that entire lit side. So this is where we get to our full moon. From there, after the full moon, it starts to um, wane. And so if I were here looking um, up at this, it would be lit on the opposite side. So I know it looks the same here, but if you can think of, of almost rotating this image, it, your perspective would change and you would see the, the opposite. And so this is my um, waning gibbous. And then from there, I would get to my third quarter moon. And finally, my waning crescent. So the ones on the, on the bottom half here, I almost want you to think of, if, if you look at it upside down, you can see that it's lit on the other side. So it, it's about your perspective um, and how that looks. If I was actually going to draw what it would look like for me as, as someone actually um, looking up in the sky from this perspective, let me see here, let's make this actually be a circle. Um, what I would see instead is the left side lit up and the, so this, this side would be filled in and I would see the left side that's lit up. So it would look kind of like that. So now what? Well, now it's your turn to start doing observations and, and looking for the moon. And one of the best ways to really wrap your head around the, the moon phases and seeing them is the change of them throughout a month or whenever you can observe them. So I know that's a little bit of a trick because um, it tends to be cloudy. So you won't always get to see the moon, but it, if you can uh, have a look for the moon every day and we're gonna create a moon phase journal. So this was linked on the UK astronomy website. And so you just need to print this out or if you don't have a printer, you can very easily recreate this and all you're going to do is, is fill this in for each day that you see the moon or don't see the moon. You're gonna have some nights, some days when you look for the moon and you don't see it because it's cloudy. And it, you can look at the exact right time at the exact right place and you won't see it because it's cloudy. But you can still take a, a record of that, an observation of that. And what you would do is just draw clouds over the moon. And so for each day, you're going to write the date and then the time that you observe the moon. Now, remember what I said earlier, if you got at the same time every day, you're not going to see the moon every day because the moon rises 50 minutes later every day. And so that means throughout the month, sometimes it rises in the evening, sometimes it sets in the evening, sometimes it rises in the morning, sometimes it sets in the morning, sometimes you'll see it in the middle of the day, sometimes you'll see it. Um, obviously in the middle of the night. So you want to um, think about um, when, when you might wanna go look for the moon. And if you can't find the moon, you can always look up online to see, is there a, um, when, can you, when is the moon visible? Um, what time, what is, the, what is the phase? When is it rising? When is it setting? Are you able to see that? And you can find those really easily on the internet. So, I would encourage everyone to create their little moon phase journal for the next month. Now you can start today or tomorrow, uh, or you can start next week if you want to follow that's the full cycle from new moon on um, the on Monday of next week through to uh, the next new moon. You can do it that way. It's completely up to you. 
and but this would be great and then what i would love to see is as these get completed and as you can uh, as you get these done if we could share those in the uk astronomy group uh, to show our moon observations that would be really cool i'm sure we would really love to see those and you can even i know the the circles here are quite small but you can even try to to sketch in some of the different features that you see on the moon and I know that um, on Monday, Ross talked all about the moon on, on Monday, moon day. So you can go back and learn a little bit more about how the moon was formed and the different features of the moon if you go back and watch that video. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, looking at our, our Oreo moon phases. I hope you've learned about our moon phases. I hope that you are ready to uh, go outside, identify your different phases and, and understand what's going on with the moon. I hope you learn a lot about it. It's, I love the moon. I love watching the moon phases and being able to look at a moon and know exactly what phase it is. So I hope you'll have that ability to do that now too. Uh, so before uh, we see if there's any questions or anything, I just wanted to let you know as well that um, I do have a website and I have a YouTube channel, Mrs. Wilson Science and MrsWilsonScience.com. And if you just search Mrs. Wilson Science on YouTube, I do um, really quick, easy experiments that you can do at home or if, if you're a teacher, it's something that you can easily incorporate into your classroom as well. So it might be something to check out and see um, if you can have a look at that. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you enjoy eating your leftover Oreos as well. And I'm just gonna wait and see if we have um, any questions. Otherwise, thank you very much. I really enjoyed being with you today. Thank you.